Welcome to the Dunbarton Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, recording this part of this service from my basement. Uh, we'll have some recorded stuff from the vestry, some recorded stuff from within the church, hopefully, and it'll all come together for this service. So we are glad you're here and we hope you enjoy it. Uh, I'm recording this a bit early this week. Usually I shoot for Thursday, Friday, sometimes Saturday. Uh, to do my recording and my putting together and editing and everything. Uh, I'm recording this on Wednesday because tomorrow I'm scheduled to get my COVID shot, my second COVID shot. After the first one, I felt kind of crummy 36, 48 hours afterwards. Nothing bad. I don't think I was running a fever, just, you know, my arm was sore and just kind of felt dragging. And so I hope that after this one, a reaction would be as mild as this last one. Uh, but I'm looking forward to getting that in my arm and get the that underway. So hopefully it will add a layer of protection. I'll still be wearing a mask. I'll still be social distancing. You've still got to do all that stuff. But it, it's like that double masking they're talking about now where you've got two levels of protection and the, the shot adds another layer of protection. And hopefully enough of us will get the shot that we can get that herd immunity and COVID will die off. Uh, won't have people to transmit from one to another and we will move on with our lives. Um, it's been an interesting year. I've got some exciting stuff coming up. Um, Ash Wednesday is, well, starting this Sunday. Uh, today, if you're watching this Sunday morning is our annual meeting. So we'll log on at 11 o'clock. It will be on Zoom. Uh, it will be the same link that we use for our coffee hour. Uh, and that will go out Sunday morning, bright and early. Uh, if you haven't received it before, I might send it out uh, before that to some people. Don't worry, it's the same link. Uh, 11 a.m. Sunday, we'll have our annual meeting. Uh, Ash Wednesday comes up shortly after that. Uh, we're going to be the 17th, I think it is, and we will be doing a uh, recorded service for that day that will be recorded and let out released that night. Uh, and then Monday, Thursday, right before Easter, we're planning a live Zoom service. In the past, we've done soup and then we gather around the table and do communion and do uh, the, the reading of the Passion story um selected readings we're going to do something similar but it's going to obviously be virtual um uh, hopefully the last time we ever have to do that virtually but um at least we're getting the experience i meet with ministers all the time and they're like oh what are you doing for this and none of us really know what will work and what won't so we're trying all sorts of things. Uh, we're also looking at having a, uh, a Bible study type thing during Lent. Uh, details will be released as soon as they uh, are figured out. Uh, we're looking at probably like four nights um, during March. We're not going to start it probably in February, but it'll uh, gather in March one night a week for a couple weeks. Uh, we tried to do that last year and we made it through the first two, three. First one got snowed out. I don't remember exactly how it worked out. We got through like three of the four weeks that I had planned. Uh, when I went up to the vestry recently, the stuff for the last night was still sitting on the table. Uh, I moved that off the table now. So uh, we're on the, the second year of uh, COVID, ad, or COVID, COVID Lent. What did you give up for Lent? We gave up meeting in person. Uh, so we're going to, we got that planned. So it's an exciting couple months coming up. Uh, we also started to talk about Easter, which is early April this year. Um, last year, no, two years ago, I did an Easter sunrise service. Easter sunrise was very, very early. Sun came up at uh, 6 a.m. or 5.45 or something like that. The trustees came out, they were cooking a breakfast. Uh, I had one or two deacons come out 
and the trustees and the deacons and I were just about the only ones there. <laughs> and so somebody said, well, we could do a Easter, not quite sunrise, but a little bit later. And uh, if it's the weather is OK, I'm game to get together and, and meet outside for something. We'll see what what it is. Um, but we still have uh, what a month and a half, two months before that happens. So plenty of time to figure that out. But today we've got a wonderful worship service planned, and we're glad you're here. Would you please join me in our call to worship? God of power and might, you sent your prophets to your people, calling us back to your covenant and teaching us your ways. In the fullness of time, you sent your son, Jesus, teaching with such authority that our eyes were opened to see your ways anew. Open our hearts and minds that we may understand and proclaim your teachings for all to hear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning is from the first letter from Paul to the church at Corinth, starting at chapter 8, verses 1 through 13. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as you are eating food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists, and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven and on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom all things exist. One Lord Jesus Christ, from whom all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge, since some have become so accustomed to idols until now that they still think of the food that they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience being weak is defiled. Food will not bring us closer to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care, but take care of this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you, who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, they might not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols. 
So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is the cause of your failing, I will never eat meat so that I might not cause one of them to fall. Our reading this morning is from one of Paul's letters to the church at Corinth, the Corinthians. Some of Paul's writings are the earliest writings that we have from uh, the early, early church. This was before the Gospels were written down. Paul was an expert in starting churches. Uh, he had been persecuting Christians, and then he had this experience on the road to Damascus. And he became a Christian, and then he started to to form these churches. And as these churches grew, they would come up with an issue that they didn't know how to address. And so they would write Paul a letter and say, hey, how? what about this? He, he, I, we don't know what to do. And Paul would write back and respond. And so Paul's letters are not Christ speaking. They're not stories of Jesus. They're stories of the early Christian church. And so this morning's passage that we read is about eating meat that was sacrificed in temples to other gods. During this time in the ancient world, there were lots of gods and lots of temples. Uh, you had the Roman gods and the Greek gods and Baal and all these, these uh, temples that were built up. And some of them required you to go and sacrifice animals. Now, they wouldn't waste the meat. They would then cook the meat after the animal was sacrificed. And you would either buy it or it would be given back to you. And you could share it. And uh, it was a, a feast. And what was happening in Corinth was people of the church were saying, is it OK? to eat that meat that was sacrificed to another god. And Paul sort of says, well, yeah, it's not bad because you know that it wasn't really a sacrifice to our god, the one true god. It was sacrificed to some other god. And so it's not your sacrifice, and it's not being given in glory of that god, so it's okay for you to eat it. But if anybody in your church has a problem with that and can't separate it in their own mind, then it's better for you to not eat of that meat. Today, later on in this morning, if you're watching this on Sunday morning, we'll be having our church council meeting. And we'll be talking about things like budget and talking about how to run the church. How do we raise funds for missions? How do we staff our committees? How do we want our church to operate in the next year? And we don't have anybody like Paul that we can write to. Uh, we get some definition from the, the conference, uh, from the National UCC, but they don't say you have to do this, 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 and this. It's really up to ourselves to govern ourselves the way that we see fit. Just before I arrived, the bylaws were edited or rewritten or uh, somehow modified, uh, which is important to do at times because it, it helps guide who we are and the way that we do what we do. But I think maybe this morning's lesson is a good one for us um, as followers of Christ. And that is that we don't always have the right answers. We don't always have somebody like Paul that we could write to and say, what about this? But we have to, to listen to God's voice to us. We have to figure out the best way in order to serve God in these new days. And certainly this year is going to be different. 
it's been a crazy year already, and I, I suspect that it's going to continue for a while to be crazy. And how are we going to operate? Is, is the YouTube format working? Uh, it may be the best thing that we've got for the time being. As we get back into uh, when people are vaccinated and, and we're starting to gather back in church, there's going to be a lot of discussion about how do we move forward in order to keep what we've gained over these months and yet get back to the essentials of what we were doing before. Um, In-person worship is going to happen. That's sort of my bottom line is we have to worship in the church at some point when it's safe to do so. But can we record the services also? And maybe put those services up online so that people who, who either couldn't attend that Sunday or who are away or whatever could still participate in worship remotely. Do we want to Zoom our services? Uh, require some internet playing around and stuff? So right now I don't think we've got the powerful enough internet in the sanctuary to do that, but it's something that we could look into doing. And so there's going to be a lot of questions as we move forward. And some of them, I'm sure, will be handled by a committee here or a committee there. And there are others that we'll bring to the church and say, how do we want to do this? Uh, one of the things that popped into my mind recently is snow. It is snowing right now as I record this. And we used to, I always used to get nervous on Saturday when a storm was coming in. You know, would people be able to safely get to church? With Zoom and YouTube, we don't have to worry about that. On Saturday night, if it's snowing like crazy, I can say, we're not going to worship in person this week. We're going to, you know, delay the inside, the inside service, and we're going to be gathering on Zoom. And we know how to do that. It's not a big deal for us. We want to be in person whenever possible, but that's a perfectly good opportunity. And so a lot of things will come up over this next year as we move forward into this time. And we've, we've got the Gospels. Uh, Paul could be a resource for us if things come up. Obviously, Paul was dealing with a lot of different things than we're dealing with now. It was a very different time, different issues. Um, but looking for guidance and looking to each other in the community and figuring out what is best for everybody is going to be really important. I don't have the answers to that, but I hope as you move through the next few months, you'll be listening for God and, and thinking about opportunities. Oh, if we did this virtually, it would allow these people to participate. Or if we decided that we wanted to run a meeting virtually, um, we could do that. And it would allow more participation, but it also takes away from the in-person to some extent. So there's a lot of balancing. I think Paul was doing a lot of that balancing that we all need to do. You know, go ahead and eat the meat. If it's not a problem for you, that's, we know the truth. Um, and I think as we move forward, we'll be looking at those same types of things. Hey, Zoom is not a problem. Let's, you know, we can go ahead and use technology in order to convey our message out further than we would be normally. So be thinking over this next week and over the next several months about, about what God may be calling us to do and where we can look for advice on the best way for our church to be in the 21st century. Amen. Oh
Join me in prayer. Most holy friend, Savior of those who call upon you, please give us more of the compassion and authority of Jesus. Embolden us to heal the multiple diseases that afflict humanity and drive out the demons that afflict our contemporary world. Hear us in our prayers, O God. Send your agents to lands that lie under darkness and oppression, where government is corrupt, justice is rare, abuse is endemic, and the weak and the poor have nowhere to turn for hope. Please increase the spiritual authority of the Red Cross, amnesty, and Christian world service to more adequately become your ready channels of compassion, justice, practical aid, reconciliation, and peace. Hear us in our prayers, O God. Send your messengers to situations where diseases like AIDS and even COVID are reaping a grim harvest. We pray especially for the afflicted nations of Africa and Asia and South America. Please give authority to the people of disciplined compassion to provide pharmaceutical help, nursing care, and better health education that we would drive out the demons of superstition and fatalism. Hear us in our prayers, O oh God. Send your servants into places where food is scarce and crops are poor. Please strengthen the authority of those local leaders and outside advisors who seek to empower the people to conserve water, dig new wells, plant trees, grow new food, cro food crops, farm fish, start new cottage industries, and obtain better prices for their goods. Hear us in our prayers, O oh God. Send your human angels of mercy into situations both here and abroad, where there is neglect, illness, sorrow, frustration, and anger. Please give some of the compassionate authority of Jesus to chaplains in hospitals and prisons, to nurses and ambulance officers, to physicians and surgeons, to social workers and foster parents, 
police officers and counselors. Hear us in our prayers, O oh God. Send your gifts of comfort and great joy among many congregations of your church. May more of the spiritual authority of Jesus empower each ordinary church member and the wisdom and compassion of Christ enlarge the ministries of lay leaders and ordained pastors. By the grace of Christ, may our deeds more adequately match our creeds and may our love expand to embrace those misfits who appear lonely and unlovable. Hear us in our prayers, O God. God, our most holy friend, in your mercy, may we go from strength to strength in things of the spirit and become lovers and the agents of the holy awe, which is beginning of the true wisdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today is our annual meeting, and we'll be talking a lot about how to raise funds for the church and also the gifts that we give of ourselves, our time and our talents um, in order to help the church run. So would you please join me in dedicating both these offerings that we've been sending in and dropping off at the church and the gifts that we will give at today's annual meeting, uh, pledging our time and our talents for the future work of the church. Loving God, you are never far from us. You are as close as our breathing. We recognize you as the one who heals the wounded spirit and who gives new life to the brokenhearted. We offer these gifts to you, O oh God, as a sign of our commitment to your grace and authority. Take us and use us and all that we have so that the kingdom of heaven will be realized on earth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare to leave this place, hear these words. Go now and heed God's message. Never forget God's wonderful mercy and kindness. Welcome to the freedom that is one in truth, but never use your freedom to undermine others. See that your words and actions are worthy of praise. And may God uphold you in a lasting covenant May Christ Jesus free you from all that would harm you. May the Holy Spirit nourish you in wisdom and faithfulness. 
we go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.